Good to see you again, John. Uh, it's, it's, you, mate. it's been a few months. It has. Um, I think you came and saw us halfway through development and uh, when we was at crucial stages, so it was really, it was really quite useful. So you've kind of seen some development, literally development as, of the product as it's, um, as it's moved along. Yeah. And uh, well, I suppose the reasons why we, we wanted to do this was one really was to start with, we didn't have an acoustic range before. Um, these are our, this is our first uh, products to go into that market. Um, this is the first one. Um, and it was really obviously crucial for Blackstar to get it right. Um, hence why it was very important to get players like yourself involved because as you can probably prove time and time again, acoustic guitar playing isn't just strumming. Yeah, you know. no it really, really isn't. I mean, um, what I, you know, I'm, I was really keen to see happen is that you didn't start with like what acoustic amps already are and then just come up with your own version of that. You really started from scratch. Yeah, yeah. And um, for me, that was very promising and made me want to be involved in it because um, it meant that I could like, have some influence on it. And also because um, all the existing amps that I've ever tried, which must be most of them, yeah. or a lot of them certainly, um, they don't really work very well, uh, I guess for my kind of playing. But yeah. in general, they, they, they really squash the sound down. They can't do uh, the full frequency range of the instrument. That's right, yeah. So many, so many problems. So the fact that you start from scratch using completely, you know, fresh ideas in amp design meant that, you know, you can be able to create something that actually works. Yeah, because of course your style incorporates an extremely wide range, especially down at the bottom end, because you are your own percussionist as well. Yeah. And um, often, I mean, we noticed on some of the, the competitive products that, as you say, that, that anything below about 80 hertz yeah. is not really... And that's where all the good stuff lives. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, people think, oh, 80 hertz is sort of the lowest note on the, on the, the guitar, yeah. so we don't need to, we can get rid of all that. It is the lowest note, but even if you're not, even if you're just strumming and finger picking, there's still so much sound that's coming out of the guitar that's below that lowest note. That's right, and, and, and as I say, all the percussion as well, you yeah, know, the, sure, the bass yeah. drum sound. So we were, we, we were very keen to try to act, you know, include all of that, like it would be playing for a studio monitor. Um, but I must admit, we, we, there was a certain amount of months of tweaking and developing, but it was when you came in that we thought, ah, okay, now we are get, we are we, we are convinced we are going down the right road yeah. because it, you can do, easily do things sort of in isolation, even with, within the team. But you needed, we, you know, it was really helpful when you came in. Was it some months ago, and mm -hmm. and then did your stuff. Yeah. And we thought, right, okay. And it, I must admit, I was nervous that day because it's like, oh, <laughs> what is John going to think? Yeah. But it was, it was good the feedback that he gave us. No, it was, um, you know, it, it was really. I couldn't believe it that day when I plugged it in. I couldn't believe that that sound was coming from one tiny little yeah. combo amp. You know, it's just like something I hadn't heard before. Yeah. Well, obviously, we've we've, we've applied um, uh, a bass reflex um, technology. Uh, in speaker design and the actual robustness of the cabinet as well to ensure that it can reproduce those kind of frequencies um, and we had to go through many changes even since then to ensure that the quality was right throughout the production because you, you know you build one you build it perfect mm -hmm. and then you get other ones built and they're not so perfect and it's not until you hear them and you realize ah these these things are really important to get mm -hmm. right so um, we've had to be very, really careful on how things are sealed up in there. Yeah. The, the porting we've moved to the side, which is something you noticed yeah. earlier. The actual tuning, it's partly done with, um, with, with test equipment, um, but then ultimately it's still always done with our ears. Right. Because um, I've always found no matter how much you try to predict what the porting is going to be yeah. like, okay. you always end up having to refine it slightly and, and um, and, and tune the actual port itself, which is obviously the bit in the side, the length of it or the, or the, the diameter of it, you end up having to tune it to get it just right. Mm -hmm. um, and that did go through probably about a dozen permutations before we even decided on that. So it's, it's, been, it's been months and months really of, of increment by increment, just trying to get it better and better. And not, you know, the thing is, at Blackstar, we were never really satisfied with just putting something together and. That do. That's it. It kind of it, it plug. It, it sounds like an acoustic, doesn't it? Yeah, sell it. We we never we'd never do that. So it feels at times sometimes we're going round and round in circles. But 
at the end of a project, it's always more pleasing to think, oh, I'm glad we put in that extra time. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so hopefully it shows. <clears throat> so there's one problem that I've always had with um, acoustic guitar amps that you've managed to avoid. So the problem is that um, when I would be playing a chord and letting that ring, for example, yeah. and then I would tap the guitar for like a percussion hit, or it could even not be a percussive thing. I could be singing a note, because you know I'll sing through these as well, yeah. plug my mic into them. So I could be singing a note, and then I strum a loud chord, and it, it all dips down because of the compression in the amps. Yeah. Because it's obviously, you know, acoustic amps are fairly small compared to a PA system. Um, I've always thought this is just a problem that can't be avoided with acoustic amps. Um, so in order to protect the amp, they squash the sound down when you do anything loud. Yeah and it completely kind of kills the playing and, and you've managed to avoid that. So well, you the, the, um, yeah, there's, it's, a, it's a combination of um, making sure there's enough headroom to start with right. um, so that there is enough clean, um, uh, you know, linear uh, part of the, of, the, of the actual dynamic range. And, but then there is, there is compression applied, but it's done in a very musical way. Th these actually use um, studio quality uh, VCA compression um, which is the kind of thing you'd find, you know, in, in studio racks, but right. it's bit, but then fine tuned, so the user doesn't have to worry about it, and it's it's a, it's also set so that the threshold is very high, um, so it allows through as much as your don't range as possible before you know grabbing hold of it and squashing it down, like you say. Yeah. Um, and also, it's soft knee compression as well, right. so it's not this abrupt, you know, sudden, you know, oh, I can hear this squashing going on. Mm -hmm. It is very gentle. Um, it also means that you can basically plug anything in, you can set the AQ how you want, and it won't go into clip. Yeah. It, so it's, it's, it's very well controlled. Again, which is particularly important for modern guitar styles, yeah. as you say. Um, the frequency range is much wider than what people have been doing before. The, the transient's much more extreme, mm -hmm. um, so it's important to better handle anything that, you know, that, that could be put into it. Yeah, well it, it really does, you know, so it's... Uh... It's great for me because it means I'm able to monitor my own sound without having to just use. Because yeah. I've always, up until now, um, when I'm playing live, I'll just use the stage monitors yeah. in the venue because um, I've never been able to find an amp that would work. But now I've, I've got one, I can, I can use that and it means I can you know, mix my vocal and my guitar myself how I want it. I can EQ them how I want them. Yeah, and, and then of uh, course yeah. use the DI outputs to go into wherever you want. Sure. You know, so, yeah. And yeah, you have a uh, you have your little kickstand underneath there, just so it elevates it a little bit. Yeah, and it's, uh, it can be adjusted to a, pretty much any angle you want as well. It's really easy, really dead simple. It's embarrassingly simple, but sometimes the best things are. Yeah, it's it, you know it's really really handy that you don't lose any bass. I've noticed when you use it because I thought maybe if the amp wasn't flush to the floor, you might yeah. lose a bit of bass, but it doesn't make any difference. And um, yeah, it means I can point it into my ears, which are yeah. what I use for hearing things. Yeah, so very important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's helpful. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you said it had studio quality compressors in it. Yeah, yeah. So, this... so wait a minute. So, because the amp, you know, it's quite reasonably priced and obviously the compressor is only a very small part of it. So when I pay, three grand for a studio compressor. Oh, what right, am I paying for then, Paul? Yeah, Can you tell me? <laughs> what did I pay for? The, 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 when I say that, what I mean is the technology of the VCAs is the same kind of technology as what you'd find in a, in a studio compressor. Right. But obviously a studio compressor will have all the knobs on there, two channels okay. usually, and a load of other bells and whistles so, and, so. and lights and you know needles and stuff. Such all a diplomatic answer. So yeah, you'll get Such all that. But, but this is all, this is all, it's got all that stuff. Yeah, but, but it's, it's all preset. tuned, all preset, so the okay. user doesn't have to worry about it. It is because I, I mean I've always felt that a compressor is often the most misunderstood thing in a studio rack. You yeah. know, people can't, they don't realise how interactive all the controls can be, mm. and they find them hard to set up. Whereas you know, if you put turn on a chorus pedal, you hear it immediately. Yeah, yeah. Compressor isn't like that. It's all, yeah, I mean, you don't want to be able to hear the compression. That's, that's it. That's, the point. that's it. It's, it's only yeah. it's meant to be just con gently controlling things. Um, so we've we've. Um, you know, worked through these to adjust the you know the ratios, the threshold, the attack and release, and all of, all those features that people look at and go, oh, what does that do? Yeah. They're all preset, so that all the user has to worry about is the gain control, mm -hmm. and then how they set the EQ. Yeah, I think you have nailed it. I'm really happy happy with them, and uh, yeah, I just it's it's a revelation for me. I just had given up on acoustic guitar amps. I really really had. 
So I'm very glad that somebody has given the amp designers who do this and this is what they do, the opportunity to really go back to the drawing board yeah. and, and create something. We did spend longer than we thought, but it's been, it's been worthwhile. Mm, no, it, it really is.